Without further ado, I would like to invite Tan Sri Michael Yeo, President of KSI Strategic Institute for Asia Pacific, to deliver his opening remarks. Let's give him a round of applause. Selamat pagi, salam sejahtera, selamat datang. Yang berhormat Dr. Sri Dr. Noraini Ahmad, Minister of Higher Education. Yang berbahagia Dr. Dr. Pramjit Singh, President of MACBU. Yang berbahagia Dr. Wei Chuan Beng, Senior Executive Director of KSI. And joining us virtually, Professor Ilasolan Mohan, President of NAPE. Dr. Dato, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2021 Malaysian Education and Learning Summit. At the outset, I wish to extend a very warm welcome to our guests of honor, Yang Bohoman, Dr. Dr. Noraini Ahmad, for taking time off your very busy schedule to be present with us here this morning. Your presence gives us a lot of encouragement and support for what we are doing. Ladies and gentlemen, education worldwide is facing a new normal after the COVID pandemic. Increasingly, we see education becoming more virtual starting last year and continuing again into the coming year, into this year, with many universities, schools and colleges going online when educational institutions are closed during the pandemic to grapple with lives and livelihoods. Online education took off and became a new normal. Today we see education adopting a hybrid model with students going back to schools and universities while many students are also continuing their education online. So the hybrid form of education will become part of this new normal. And this brings new challenges to the education sector. The access to technology, the affordability of technology, including computers, tablets, and internet connectivity becomes a challenge. We have also seen many people becoming experts on Zoom and students adopting to virtual education. Technology will become increasingly a major driver of education. We hope, therefore, that our institutions of higher learning, as well as our schools, will be able to adapt to this technology challenge. Digitalization of education will be the key word going forward. We need to ensure that our school curriculum are revamped and to be able to include subjects like coding and to teach technology from young. We must also look at the wider philosophy and pedagogy of education. Education standards must be upheld at all times, and we must put students first in our education planning and policies. We also hope that going forward, there will be more public-private partnership in education, particularly in higher education. And I believe that the Minister of Higher Education will be able to help guide us on this PPP journey with her experience in the private sector as a former chairman of Madrid. University-industry partnership must also be enhanced. We need to produce future-ready graduates from our universities who are employable right from day one. So together, let us build a better Malaysia with a better education for all. Education must unite us, not divide the nation. Education must transform the nation and not leave anyone behind. In conclusion, I would summarize that there are three D challenges that we need to address in education. 
the three Ds being digitalization of education, diversity in education to ensure women empowerment as well as ethnic and geographical diversity, and the third D being distinction in education to ensure excellence and standards and quality in policies and delivery. Let me end now by thanking once again the Honourable Minister for gracing the Education Summit this morning. I want to thank Megpoo and Nape also for being our partners once again in organising this summit. And thank you also to all our sponsors and to our speakers and moderators for your willingness to be with us to share your valuable knowledge and experience. Sakyan Krimakase. Thank you, Tan Sri Dr. Michael Yeo. Next up, we would like to invite Datuk Parmjit Singh, President of the Malaysian Association of Private Colleges and Universities and President of the Malaysian Service Providers Confederation to deliver his introductory speech. Let's give him a round of applause. A very good morning, Honourable Minister of Higher Education, Datu Sri Dr. Noraini Ahmad, Tan Sri Michael Yeo, and colleagues on the floor. I think it's needless to say that these are extremely challenging times. Uh, I use the word challenge so that it's not mistaken to be a chore. Actually, it is a challenge going forward. Apart from the scare of the pandemic, it has also been a major disruption to the system of education. We've had to rapidly move from traditional education, just like Tansri Michael has said, to one of an online mode and now moving on to a hybrid mode. It actually tested the agility of the education system and the institutions that were able to move that fast uh, very quickly. It equally tested the agility of the regulators. And there I have to say that we salute the Ministry of Higher Education and MQA for immediately responding to allowing institutions to move away from the traditional methods that were approved to one that was totally unconventional and, uh, and uh, uh, being called during the time. And Honourable Minister, thank you so much for leading uh, this change and allowing us uh, that flexibility. What is even more important is going forward, there has got to be a mindset change uh, within the framework of the regulators because things will never go back to the same. The expectations of students today are going to be different. We're talking about Gen Zs now. They're digital natives. They're not going to accept the traditional mode anymore. So I think going forward, we'll have to work very closely to look at our current policies and regulations to see how we can accommodate this new generation of nat digital natives. Furthermore, we are all aware the Malaysian Digital Blueprint has been launched. That's another challenge. The challenge brought about by the pandemic is just not the scale of the pandemic, but also the acceleration in terms of the disruption that has come about. Digitization was on the cards anyway, but the pace at which it has accelerated now is unprecedented. I've only seen this level of acceleration in the early 80s. I think my, my colleague will know when PCs first made their presence 
there was a massive acceleration in dig digitization in the early to mid 80s that actually even uh, accelerated even further in the late 90s, uh, resulting in the dot-com bust in the year 2000. Now we're seeing that again. We're seeing it not just because it is necessary, but it's the survival of businesses. Businesses have to reinvent themselves because consumer behavior has changed as a result of this pandemic. In the same way, the expectations of our young people, that's changed too. And many of them are born different. We cannot teach them the way we were taught to learn. We have to teach them the way they have been born to learn. They're different. So this is where uh, education takes a new dimension. The traditional mode, extrapolation of the traditional mode cannot happen anymore. It, it has to be disrupted. And this is what we are facing right now. Um, Tantri Michael did say that this requires a lot more investment in um, in, uh, in the form of um, connectivity, uh, in the form of uh, equipment, um, that's a given. I, I don't think that's that's a choice anymore. Every nation will have to put money into transforming, transforming the economies. Economic growth cannot take place without talent. And talent has got to be right for purpose. And, um, and that again, the, the emphasis on employment as a national agenda right now is highly pronounced. The Prime Minister has set up the National Employment Council. He himself chairs it, below which there are various task forces. So the emphasis on ensuring employment has become so very important. And there again, major transformation. The skills that are demanded are way different from the type of skills that we have traditionally been producing. It is often known that, and this is mentioned so many times, that the private sector has got 50% of Malaysian tertiary students. Well and good, but do we also then realize, which often is not realized, is the private sector is then also producing 50% of the talent for this country. So as significant as education is, talent development is even more important. Yesterday, there was a BBC article that the UK, and you can download this, you can Google this, that the UK is heading towards a disaster in terms of digital talent. They're saying that there has been a 40% reduction in the take-up of IT education over the last few years. And that coupled with the, with the massive extrapolation of new talent required in the digital world, uh, they've used the word disaster. Yeah, impending disaster. I think in Malaysia, we have also underestimated it. If we have ambitions as outlined in the digital Malaysia blueprint, just like uh, this is the, the next biggest we have seen uh, after 1996, when the MSE was set up, those ambitions will not be met if the right talent is not available. The fact also um, uh, is highly visible that young people today like to go and work across borders after they graduate. That, that's a given. This is not a question of choice. That's what this generation is all about. Every country loses valuable talent because after young people graduate, they want to go and experience another part of the world. And those who go and study overseas, half of them don't come back. That applies to every country, not just Malaysia. 
And those who don't go overseas want to experience life overseas after they graduate. So that's a normal flow. It is not unique to Malaysia. It's a normal flow. Singapore loses their talent. They go to China. 33% of the talent we lose goes to Singapore. 14% of the talent we lose goes to China. 11% of the talent we lose goes to Korea, then Japan and so forth. That's a given. It's going to continue to happen. And just last week, I made a presentation to the Minister of Human Resource appealing to him that they should not just freeze work permits, especially for new graduates. Because you have to fill the vacuum that's left by people who go somewhere else. Every country is filling that vacuum of young talent going elsewhere by allowing young graduates that they have in their country. We have thousands of them at our doorstep. If we don't use them, that vacuum will be made worse. So there I was specifically appealing to the minister for the continuation of the EP3. EP3 is the employment pass that's given for maximum three years on a year-to-year -year basis. They don't become residents. They don't take away local jobs. But the, the, the fact remains there will be a huge vacuum. I think my friend Wei knows that we, we've been in industry, in the technology industry for so many years. I've been on the board of MDEC for many years. Talent has always been a big issue for the last 30 to 40 years. It has never gone away, and it will continue to be a huge issue. So this conference is very appropriate because we're talking about new methods of learning, and I'm also moderating a session that is specifically in skills for the future. So I think we need to keep getting together uh, so that we can keep re-examining uh, before it's too late as to where our gaps are and what we need to do. They're low-hanging fruits. Yes, um, we're doing a lot of upskilling and reskilling, uh, but there have also got to be a revamp of the education system to make sure that our digital natives, who are the young people, uh, get what they deserve to enhance their careers and fulfill national needs towards economic growth. No talent, no growth. That's the bottom line to all, all of this. So I think, um, having said that, um, it's always a mistake giving me the floor because I never stop talking. Yeah, I can go on for the rest of the day, uh, but I believe my time is up. Um, let's have a fruitful session today. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Parmjit Singh, for delivering your introdu introductory speech. Let's give him a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. We would now like to invite Associate Professor Ilich Solan Mohan, President of the National Association of Private Educational Institutions, who will be delivering his speech virtually. Can I invite you to fix your eyes to the screen? Let's give him a round of applause as well, ladies and gentlemen. A uh, very good morning. Yang berhormat Datuk Seri Dr. Noraini Ahmad, Minister of Higher Education Malaysia. Yang bahagia Tan Sri Datuk Michael Yeo, President, KSI Strategic Institute for Asia Pacific. Yang bahagia Datuk Pamji Singh, President, Malaysian Association of Private Colleges and Universities, NAPCO. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. First, my apologies for not being able to be present live with all of you there, but I'm always with you. Now, I'd like to thank KSI for once again inviting NAPI to be one of the collaborating organizations for the National Education and Learning Summit 2021. And it is an honor to be invited to deliver a welcome address. I'm very happy indeed to welcome all the participants and guests to this annual summit. The summit today covers the future of education and training due to the current pandemic situation and the post-pandemic era where technology is to be the key enabler. Also, to deliberate the challenges faced by the education sector in producing employable graduates amidst 
the special skills requirements and the weakening of the global economy. At this stage, I would like to thank the government for recognizing the private higher education sector as an industry which contributes close to 40 billion ringgit towards the national GDP and is projected to increase to 80 billion by 2020. Education and training are important vehicles for nation building and human capital development. In supporting this initiative, the Ministry of Higher Education, with the input from the private higher education sector, has developed a blueprint way forward for private higher education institutions. We are very happy that this would develop, help to develop private higher education sector to greater heights in the region. Ladies and gentlemen, in making this happen, we welcome and appreciate and thankful to the effort by the Ministry of Higher Education in setting up Bermuda IPTS, a committee to deliberate the reforms, including policies and regulations as outlined in the Way Forward Blueprint. And also to thank the Ministry for inviting NAPE together with the, higher, with the other higher education associations onto this committee to make this happen. However, we are also faced with new challenges affecting the education system in accommodating to the new normal of learning and teaching. That is the blended learning system, face-to-face -face and virtual. As my colleague Dr. Pramjit mentioned just now, we share sentiments of the industry, regulations and legislations need to be looked into in allowing greater autonomy to institutions be flexible in determining the mode of learning and teaching. The current MQA regulation allows only a maximum of 30% distance learning mode. The Higher Education Act 555 also requires separate licensing for conventional and ODL modes. These amendments need to be addressed sooner for us to stay globally and competitive. Of course, currently there is a leeway and we, we are already doing it, but it has to be uh, more in the regulations and in the Education Act. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope the discussions and deliberations today would provide inputs to the above initiatives in further addressing the challenges faced by the education sector. Under the current, current pandemic situation and turbulent times, one of the key challenges faced by the whole education sector and training sector is sustainability. Hope the reforms to education policies and processes would address this as well. Ladies and gentlemen, with these remarks, I would like to once again welcome all of you to the summit and hope there would be active engagements and to KSI Siabas for organizing this event. Thank you very much. Let's give him a round of applause once again, ladies and gentlemen. It's amazing what we can do with technology these days. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we are privileged today to have before us the Minister of Higher Education of Malaysia. Let's put our hands together and warmly welcome Yang Berhormat Datuk Sri Dr. Naraini Ahmad, Minister of Higher Education of Malaysia, to deliver the opening keynote address for the 2021 National Education and Learning Summit. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yang berbahagia Tan Sri Michael Yeo, President of KSI for Asia Pacific. Yang berbahagia Datuk Dr. Pramjit Singh, President of MAPKU, yang berusaha Associate Professor Elijah Soland uh, Mohan, President of NAPE, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good morning to all of you. First and foremost, 
I would like to express my thanks to Tan Sri, Michael Yo, and the KSI for inviting me to deliver the opening keynote address at 2021 National Education and Learning Summit. I applaud the efforts undertaken by the organizing committee to bring together experts, policymakers, and industry players to chart the way forward for education, especially under these trying times. A future-ready, pandemic-proof education is the theme for this year's summit, and it is highly relevant to our situation where COVID-19 is still present with the new norm dominate our way of life. Hence, the need to plan for the future of our higher education is needed, is indeed necessary, and open discussion such as this summit is crucial in keeping one another informed on the current higher education landscape. Ladies and gentlemen, the COVID-19 pandemic has caused a disruption in our education system, including the higher education ecosystem. Since March 2020, we have faced a lot of challenges. The higher education institutions, both private and public universities and colleges, had to abruptly change the teaching and learning method we had to suddenly change from classroom teaching to online learning and teaching and move forward towards digitalization. Whether we like it or not, we cannot deny the fact that we are now in the digital age and to stay relevant in this new digital age in the world of uncertainties, we need to chart our path and navigate our way to ensure that we will not get lost. We need to embrace the changes to be future ready and to provide pandemic proof education. We need to move fast. And it is due to this realization that I have included empowering the education digitalization agenda as one of the six strategic focus for the Ministry of Higher Education for 2021. Ladies and gentlemen, the higher education sector was among the sectors greatly affected by the pandemic. A total of 1.2 million students, including 130,000 international students, were affected when the teaching and learning activities could not be carried out as usual beginning March 2020. We had no choice but to leverage digital technology to ensure continuation of classes. This was done through massive online, massive open online learning, open educational resources, flip classroom online, and many more. This, of course, came, as I mentioned earlier, with a lot of challenges. Students and lecturers' readiness, students afford affordability to buy devices, the infrastructure needed, tools and internet availability are among the issues faced by many. To remedy the situation, Mohi has taken initiatives to help ease the students' burden. For example, Mohi, together with local higher education institutions, telco companies, and other corporations, launch the data plant and device packages initiative to higher education institution students in November 2020. Since then, an estimated of 200,000 data plans and 4,000 devices have been distributed to students in the B40 group. This is one of many efforts taken by the ministry in ensuring students are able to receive quality education. Ladies and gentlemen, in improving the effectiveness of post-COVID-19 virtual learning, the Harvard Business Review in an article entitled What the Shift to Virtual Learning Could Mean for the Future of Higher Education suggested 
that ICT infrastructure need to be improved, including physical aspects, bandwidth capacity, and hardware. Therefore, in the 2021 budget, Ringgit Malaysia 50 million has been approved for the upgrading of MyRAN projects to enable students to have better and faster internet access and connectivity. Apart from this, all higher education institutions need to adapt existing learning modules and assessment methods to the digital environment as well as shift their minds to embrace the new norms of teaching and learning. Teaching staff skills and knowledge need to also be enhanced, especially in handling technology so that quality education could be delivered to the students and the goals of digitalizing education can be achieved. It is my dream for all higher education institutions to have a truly conducive digital learning environment, such as the classroom of the future at Harvard Business Schools. Ladies and gentlemen, the pandemic has affected not only the teaching and learning method of delivery, it has also deeply affected the graduate employability in the country. Mohi is also consistently looking for ways to put our graduates ahead to other job seekers. As all of us are aware, many organizations and individuals have been affected by COVID-19 pandemic. Hence, Mohi believes that it is important to lend graduates a helping hand during this challenging time. One of the initiatives carried out by Mohi is the career advancement program known as Penjana KPT CAP. This program aims to reskill and upskill the participating graduates by further enhancing their existing abilities and knowledge through industry collaborations. This program consists of three sub programs, namely the Place and Trained entrepreneurship, and gig economy. Upon completion, uh, upon completion of the training, participants will stand a chance of securing a job placement in the participating industries. It is one of many MOHI efforts to better equip our graduates to face the future. Ladies and gentlemen, the pandemic has forced upon us an immense shift from teaching and learning in traditional settings with physical interactions to online delivery using platforms such as Google Classroom, Zoom, Microsoft Teams, and many more. Physical interactions are placed with video conferencing such as what is done today through these platforms. Therefore, we need to ensure the quality of our education is not compromised in any way. We need to ensure that we can provide a future-ready, pandemic-proof education. Let us work together and give our all in education in educating our future generation for the strength of our nation in the future. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe the sessions in this year's summit will be able to address all the critical issues that we are facing in our higher education landscape today and further assist us in charting our way in this new era. Again, I would like to express my deepest thank you to Tan Sri Michael Yu and the KSI for giving me the opportunity to be part of the 2021 National Education and Learning Summit. It is indeed an honor, Tan Sri. 
And I would like to end my speech with a quote from John F. Kennedy. Let us think of education as the means of developing our greatest abilities because in each of us, there is a private hope and dream which, fulfilled, can be translated into benefit for everyone and greater strength for our nation. With that, I wish all of you a productive and fruitful sessions today. Thank you very much.